Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements, in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. Great to have a Bible. Let's open ours up to Romans chapter 5. Amen. You're a reflection of it, too. I just want you to know, because the Bible says right here, you're the righteousness of God. Amen. You've received abundance of grace. What would we look like if we hadn't? Amen? Yeah, but, but, but our Bible says you've received abundance of grace here in this 17th verse of, of the fifth chapter of Romans uh, and, and the gift of righteousness. And now you reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And so we, uh, we want to, uh, to again just share, uh, share some things with you uh, here today and probably next Sunday, maybe even the Sunday after that, and, and take some time and share uh, about righteousness. Now hold your place there in Romans 5 and turn back to Hebrews chapter 5 if you would. Hold your place, we'll come back to it. Hebrews, the fifth chapter. While we're doing that, uh, come up if you would and, and, and just write out again, write out again uh, some of the definition of righteous or righteousness. Righteous. What does it mean? What, what does righteous mean? Uh, and, and, and what is righteous, what is that based on? Uh, I remember growing up in church and and I, I remember the first service I was in when the preacher said, would everyone who's righteous raise your hand? I mean, like three or four people kind of went like this. You know, almost like they were, they were ashamed to admit because, and, and the rest of them looked and went, oh, I would never say that about myself. Because somehow saying I am righteous makes some kind of statement that you think more highly of yourself than you should. Righteous, then, is some definition of some level of holiness. Uh, I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm perfect. I've got everything figured out. I've got everything straightened out. I need no more adjustment uh, in my life. Yes, I would say, I, I think I'd say I'm righteous. Or, or, or just turn around and point to someone that you would say is really a righteous Christian, a righteous person. When, when as a matter of fact, you, you can't be a Christian without being righteous. Right standing with God. Righteous, simply the, the first definition uh, of righteous is rightness. Rightness. That God would look at you and say, you, you're, you're all right. You're all right. There, there's no partial righteousness. You're all right. You're all right. And, and, and so that's one of the things that we can, we can share with you scripturally and biblically you can't be partially righteous. You're, you're either righteous or you're not. And rightness with God is something that only he can define. Only he can define what righteousness is. Now, uh, you may, maybe there's one person here, I'm not sure, but maybe there possibly could be one person here that's ever got a speeding ticket. <laughs> You didn't have to raise your hand. I just, <laughs> like three guys over here. None of the ladies did that. They're sharper than Okay. But you, you know, do you know, do you know there's a little bit of leeway that most officers are able to exercise? That if you're driving up Losey Boulevard now that they've decreased the speed limit to like five. <laughs> um, it's 25, right? But, you know, feels like five, right? <laughs> I could walk faster. Let me out. So, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't get into all that, but, you know, it's a, I, 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 I did hear some of the reporting that it was shaking people's basements. Uh, and so the trains still go by at the same speed and, and, and that, but we got traffic slowed down to 25, and I don't know if that's helping. Uh, but uh, if you're going 26, 
technically you're, you're breaking the speed limit, correct? And I don't know of one officer that's going to tag you with a speeding ticket for doing 26. Uh, my dad used to drive professionally, drove, drove truck on a, uh, in a number of different situations, uh, and he did get a ticket one time. He was going uh, in a different state, not our state, but in a different state, uh, and he was pulled over with his big rig, with his big bulk milk truck, and, and the officer came up and put his Smokey Bear hat on and came up to his window and he said, I just opened the door and said, is there a problem? He thought maybe he had a tire uh, or maybe a problem with a tail light. And, and he said, problem? He said, your speed. You're driving through my county and do you know how fast you were going? He said, 55. That man said, 56. <laughs> and wrote him out a ticket. And, and tagged him for, because, because technically he, he, he is breaking the law, correct? He broke the limit of speed. And, and so uh, technically you do that. But there's, usually there's a little bit of leeway. Now I don't know, uh, so I'm not going to tell you exactly which agency this young man made this statement serves. But he told me, over eight is great, nine you're fine, ten you're mine. <laughs> so he apparently would, would, uh, would allow you to, uh, to exceed the speed limit by nine miles an hour. Your speedometer better be correct <laughs> because he said ten you're mine uh, and, and anything above that. Uh, and uh, Paul and I uh, witnessed yesterday, we flew back from Dr. Barclay's conference. We had to go to Madison to get the flight we needed, and so we flew back into Madison, got our car, and on the way, there was someone from another state just south of our state. <laughs> and I said, see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> sure enough, after the interstate broke, when we were coming more toward home, uh, up in the future on the interstate, everybody was pulling over and there were the red and blue lights and there was our little maroon vehicle with those, that's Illinois plates on it and, and he made a donation to our state. <laughs> so you can all feel better. Uh, uh, th there was no nine miles an hour there. He was probably exceeding the speed limit by, by 30. And, and, and received his due reward for his actions. In righteousness, there is no little bit of leeway that, okay, you're righteous up to this point, and there's just kind of a gray area. There's none of that. There's none of that whatsoever. You are either entirely right there's no almost right. And there's no excessive right. There are no levels of righteousness. In its base, now we're going to get to right actions and right living and right thoughts and right conduct. See, when your Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Righteousness also, totally separate category, means right living. You don't get to heaven by right living. You get to heaven by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is then reflected in your living. And a righteous person ought to demonstrate and display all righteousness. That's what your Bible says. What your Bible says. Far too many people are right with God due to their faith in God's Son and living wrong. Living in gossip, living in condemnation, lying, stealing, cheating, all the way, all the way down the list. And so we then as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ have a assignment to make disciples out of converts and out of new believers. And a disciple is a disciplined follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
but you're standing in God. Once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, once you are changed by the Holy Spirit on the inside, from that moment on, you are right with God. Don't ever throw it away. Don't ever purpose to live wrong. Don't ever purpose to do those things that are displeasing in God's sight. And then when you discover you have been, repent. Repent and get back into right. Now, in Revelation chapter 3 and in Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible talks about God bringing discipline and correction. Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Or in, in, in King James, Revelation chapter 3, he rebukes. Whoever the Lord loves, he rebukes, chastens, disciplines. And, and part of that discipline may very well be you hearing God's voice. That's his word. And you hearing God's voice through the sower, that'd be the preacher, and then you making adjustments as necessary. That's, that's evidence of God's love. God loves me enough not to leave me the way I am. God loves me enough to point out when I'm wrong. It's kind of like a warning ticket. So, so if you get a warning ticket in church, don't crumple it up and throw it out the window angry that you got stopped. Set it right up there on the dash as a reminder uh, and, and, and be happy that you got the warning because tickets are a lot more expensive. Whom the Lord loves, he points out their faults. And here's what, here's what Hebrews chapter 12 says, that the goal of correction is the peaceable fruit of, of righteousness. See, if I'm doing something that's not right, correction comes to get me back on right. If I'm doing something that's inappropriate and improper toward God or to, to people, any person, any, any people, if, I, if I'm doing something and, and I'm arrested, you know, the Spirit of God is the, I mean, He, he can arrest you. And, and he can pull you up short. I mean, if you're giving ear to, uh, to gossip and complaining and, 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 uh, and, and, and you're listening to that and, and, and the Holy Spirit just on the inside of you or, the, or the, 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 the pastor just mentions it and you're going, why am I doing that? I'm allowing that person. I'm justifying in that person's eyes that it's okay to complain. It's okay to grumble. It's okay to gossip. It's okay to tail bear. Uh, it's okay to uh, speak about one of God's leaders. Uh, it, 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 it's okay to, to, to backstab. Uh, that's not right. That's not right. When the Bible says give no audience to it and give no place to it. Uh, and so then I make my adjustment. The goal of correction is always rightness. Now again, that's all in conduct. That's not in standing. You have right standing with God. That doesn't mean everything you do, say, and think is right. That's right. But you still have right standing with God. The righteousness that we're dealing with first, are you there in Romans chapter 5 yet? Romans chapter 5, it states in verse 17, is a gift. See it? If by one man's offense, that's, that's Adam's sin, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Righteousness there, it says, is a gift. Look at verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all. Now, how about that? Your least favorite person in all of existence just changed. By one person's sin, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification unto life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So righteous here is a standing that you have with God. The first definition of righteousness is simply rightness, being, 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 being right. Being right. 
Number two, it is the state of being right. Being right being in quotes. The state of being right. This is a state that you're in. And you don't go in and out and 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 in and out. You accept the Lord Jesus Christ and God then declares you to be righteous. The third is pleasing to God. Righteous. The third definition is pleasing to God. Now let's go ahead, and I realize that, that this is review as well, but let's look at Titus chapter 3. Then we'll go back to Hebrews. Titus chapter 3, starting with verse 5. Titus chapter 3, 5 through 7. And, and, and it says, not by work. Say it. Not by works. Louder. Not by works. Convince me. Not by works. Okay, that, that, that's, that is key to your understanding and grasping and embracing of your right standing with God. It's not by works. It's not by performance. It's not by achievements. It's not by anything you've done. Or haven't done. That's not where righteousness comes from. Righteousness comes through your acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ. He got his from the Father. You get yours from him. Amen. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, we very often, and, and in this generation mostly, uh, and in this nation mostly, have talked about we accept Jesus and let him come into your heart. Jesus has never left the throne of God. If you want to split hairs, not, not split hairs, if you want to be doctrinally accurate, Jesus doesn't ever leave the throne, the right hand of God, until he comes back for his own. And, and what happened was the Holy Spirit came into your heart and changed you, cleansed you, washed you, perfected you on the inside, made you from darkness to, 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 to light, from death to life, from not being right with God to in the twinkling of an eye, making you right with God because you accepted his gift. He so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. When you accept the gift that he sent, instantaneously the spirit of God changes you on the inside, not on the outside, not in your thinking, not in your soul. Your soul and your mind still have to be renewed. Your body won't be changed until the last moment at the twinkling of an eye when the last trumpet shall sound. The dead in Christ will rise first. We who are alive and remain shall be changed. Then and only then will your body be redeemed. Romans chapter 8 talks about the redemption of your body, but the inside, the inner man, your spirit, you're right with God. You're just as right as Jesus. It's the same righteousness. You're just as right with God. He shed on that on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Next verse, verse 7 says that being justified by his grace. Justified is the, the, the other word we're looking at and studying here. Justified means to be declared righteous or pronounced righteous or proclaimed righteous or decreed righteous. To be pronounced. I pronounce you are now righteous. You've heard that at weddings. I pronounce you are now husband and wife. They're not until that proclamation is made. I pronounce you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You're right. You're right with God. I decree. I declare. Uh, and, and those proclamations are made by God. You can't make it on yourself. You can't just one day get up and say, I think I'm going to announce that I'm righteous now. I think I'm right with who? The only one who can make a decree of you are right with God is God. He's the only one with the standard. And the standard is not going to church 52 weeks in a row. The standard is not giving some particular sum of money. The standard is not being nice to your neighbors. The standard is not never missing a day of school. The standard is not, I will never tell a lie. The standard is nothing immoral. The standard is, is, is none of those things. The standard is what God sets as a standard, and that's you accepting his gift. The Lord doesn't want you to reject his gift. He wants you accepting. If you're going to be right with him, you have to accept his gift. When you accept Jesus as Savior, he decrees, he declares, he proclaims, he pronounces, you're now right with me. Because you accepted his son. Righteousness. That being justified, being declared righteous, doesn't mean you're living righteous. I mean, how many people get saved and they're living completely righteous that day? Anybody ever? Not one person. No, we grow in righteousness and right living. 
but, but being declared righteous, that comes instantaneously when you're justified, that we should be made heirs to the hope of eternal life. Thank you. Now, now I want you to go back to the book of, oh, I said Hebrews, didn't I? Okay, we'll do Hebrews, and then we'll go back to John. All right, uh, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. And he's still talking here uh, about Melchizedek and, and, and his priesthood. And it says in verse 5, Jesus himself didn't even, he didn't glorify himself to be made a high priest. That, that, that was God's doing. Uh, and, and it says, verse 10, he's called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, now look with me at verses 11 through 14. It says, of whom we have many things to say, but are difficult to be expressed, seeing that you are dull of hearing. See, the limitation on the preacher was people's slowness to hear. Verse 12, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again the, which principles? First principles of the oracles of God and have become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. Now, hold your place. This church was somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 35 years old. For 30 to 35 years, they've been, they've been Christians. They, they've been believers. They at least were converted. They've been disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. They've had church structure. They've had programs. They've had exercises. They've had picnics. They've had ball teams. They've, they've had bowling nights. They've had movies. They've had, they've had Christmas programs. They've had fellowship meals. They've had, they've had 35 years of Sunday morning services. And he said the time is, is such that you've been a Christian for 30, 35 years. You ought to be able to teach others. See, just because you've been saved a long time is no evidence that you're maturing as a believer. They were still babies, 35 years old, and they were still in diapers and had need of the sucky bottle and cried when they didn't get their pacifier and threw a fit when they didn't have, get their own way. Couldn't change their own mess. That was them, not you. Relax. <laughs> that, that, was, that, was the, that was the church here. And, 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 and he's writing to him. The time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you are become such as need milk and not strong meat. A lot of times we go out for lunch after service. Sometimes we go to a place where I can order a steak. If I have my choice, it's a ribeye. Done medium. Bring me a salad. Matter of fact, bring me two. Thousand Island on both of them. I'll eat my steak and salad and some biscuits. Lots and lots of that honey butter if we go to the place I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't know how I'd feel if that waitress came and she came with a bottle. It had a little nipple on the top. And she squirted a little bit on her wrist and she just set that bottle in front of me. <laughs> I mean, that, you obviously have this wrong. That belongs to someone else. I ordered a ribeye, the, the 14 ounce one, really well marbled, done medium. I mean, if you run out, just bring me a T-bone. Sirloin will do. But I did not order this. And have the waitress just fold her arms and say, well, the Lord says, that's all the more mature you are. Enjoy your bottle. Did I tell you this morning that if you love the Lord enough, you will not take offense at anything? 
See, if I love the Lord enough, I know that's in the Bible, and that happens with 35-year-old people, 35-year-old, excuse me, Christians, been Christians, so they're probably at least 45 or 55 or 65 or 75 or 85 years old. And somebody just told them, you need a bottle. You can't handle meat. You still need a bottle. You're that immature. You're, you're that much of uh, an infant in spiritual things. All you can handle is a bottle. I mean, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be looking for the door. I'd be fighting my emotions. I'd be going across the street. And they can have my tip, bless God. Tell me I need a bottle. Can you imagine these Hebrew Christians? This is the church of Jerusalem. This is the church. Uh, uh, this is the oldest church, longest standing church. And here's, here's, here's the preacher saying, you need your diaper changed. You're acting like a big baby. I don't imagine they had any hanky waving. Nobody shouting Hosanna, hallelujah, preach it. That's right, because he told the whole bunch that. He didn't just tell one. He didn't take one off to the side. Here, come on, let me talk to you. Let me get you off here. No, he told the whole bunch. Bunch of babies. That's what he told them. That's what he told them. And, and, and they all had to keep a smile on, act like they weren't offended. Right? Yeah, so you, you don't need milk, meat. I mean, you can't even, you can't even ha- handle chopstick, hamburger steak. You need a bottle. Well, God loves babies. <laughs> I told you, he'll love you right where you're at. You stay a baby for 35 years if you want to. But glory to God, some of the Christians, like, like the ones I'm looking at, they're going to learn how to dress themselves. They're going to put on the breastplate of righteousness. They're going to shod their feet with the gospel to go preach it. They're going to put God's armor on. They're going to, they're going to fix their tongue, and they're going to learn how to speak and not just jabber and not just make noise. They're going to direct their speech the way it should be, direct their praise and direct their worship. They're going to humble themselves. I mean, you, can, you can't teach a four-year-old to humble themselves. That's a, that, that's a, that's a spiritual quality of some level of, of spiritual maturity. They're going to at some point be able to get from point A to point B and transport themselves. Not, not, just, not just having to be carried everywhere by somebody else's faith. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You helped me today, Pastor. I know. For every one of you, now look, now look at what it says. He said in verse 12, you, you need somebody to come you ought to circle, highlight, put some brackets, underline the word again. See, this isn't the first time they've heard it. It just didn't take hold. It didn't sink in. They, they, weren't, they weren't acting on it. Verse 12, the time you ought to be teachers, you need one to teach you again. You know, this is the point where the preacher usually says, would you look at your neighbor? I'm not going to say it, but this is the point where the preacher usually says, would you look at your neighbor and say, would you finally get this so we can move on? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> if you've got a mirror in your purse, you can do that. Just say, would you finally get this so you can... We can see, <clears throat> he says, I, I've said it before. I've said it before. Have you ever noticed on the communion verses that the Apostle Paul says, like I said to you last time? That's what he said. Just like I said to you the first time there were before. So nobody gets it the first time. These people didn't get it for the 35th time. So he says, you have one again, you need one to again come teach you the first principles. Again. Maybe underline that too. First principles of the oracles of God and and become such as they need milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in one element of the word. What is it? The word of righteousness. Everybody that needs milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He is a baby. He's an infant. He's a neophyte. But strong meat belongs to those who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised or trained to discern good from evil. Your senses, not just your spirit. I'm talking about your senses are, are, are trained to discern good from evil. And so... 
It states right there what the first principle of the Word of God. And, and this, is, this is very likely the first thing that we ought to teach new believers. It's the first principle of the oracles of God. Instead, we try to wade them off into revelation and wade off into prophecy and wade off and get them drowned. When the first thing we ought to teach every believer is the word of righteousness. It's the milk of the word. It's the milk of God's word, being right with God. Now, we've established, and, and we're going to look at one more set of scriptures, and then we're going to dismiss. We've established that righteousness, as our Bible as our Bible gives it, is a gift. Where was that? Romans 5.17. Romans 5.17. Those who've received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Who does it come through? The Lord Jesus Christ. We established that, that we're justified and declared righteous through His work. And, and not only, uh, not only uh, there in Titus 3, 5 through 7, but also in Romans chapter 5 and the 19th verse, that, that all, through the offense of one, many were made sinners. Through the obedience of one, many shall be made righteous. We can also establish it through 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians 5.21. And of course, that comes on the heels of verse 17 that says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That's the day you got saved. What a glorious day, amen? Yeah, yeah brand new creature. And then it says he gave you the, the ministry of reconciliation. And, and the last verse in, in that section, verse 21, says that he who knew no sin... The only one who was ever sinless. You're trying to live your, your, your life to, to, uh, to perfection and, and to become sinless, and then you're going to be right with God? You're never going to get there. The Bible's absolutely clear. You'll never get there on your own. But he already did. He already lived a perfect, sinless life, and that was judged by God to be right. Perfect, sinless, that's right. That's, that's, that's the standard that God set, and the only one who's ever met it is His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. And He met it. If you can accept that, then you get the same right standing with God that He had. And so it says here, for He, God, has made Him, Jesus, to be what? Sin for us, or sin in our place. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. There is no righteousness with God outside of him. There's no righteousness, there's no right standing with God outside of righteousness. Now, I told you we were going to John, but I just, I just, I just, I could say I can't help myself, but I can. I just don't want to. Turn over to Galatians. Because the Lord is just, is just, prompting me right now to go and look at, at the book of Galatians. Chapter 3. You there? Yes. Yeah. Come on, let's hurry up. That steak is awaiting. <laughs> Galatians chapter 3. Ready? Yes. Galatians chapter 3. <clears throat> look at verse... Huh. Huh. Where do we start in Galatians? Well, let's look at chapter 2 and verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified. What's justified mean? Declared, Declared righteous. A man is not justified by works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. That we might be justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. Not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. How much? None. Zero. Verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness comes by anything that I do, anything that I perform, anything that, that, that I achieve, any work of mine, even good works, not by works of righteousness which I have done, but by His mercy, unmerited, unearned, undeserved mercy. He saved us. I don't frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ died for nothing. 
If I could work my way in, if I could live a good enough life, if I could be holy enough, if I could keep all the commandments, if I could keep all the feasts, if I could, if I could do everything that was in all of those 600 and some odd commandments, not 10, 630 plus different commandments besides all of the rituals, besides never failing in any of the celebrations, if I could do all of that and then say, see, I'm right with God, then that would be what the Bible calls frustrating the grace of God. And if I could do that, then Christ died for nothing. Christ died in vain, useless, totally useless. But the fact is, not one person is justified by their own works. Not one person is declared, pronounced, proclaimed, and decreed right with God by what they have done. The only person in this entire, the only person in this entire kingdom, the only person in this entire stretching over thousands and thousands and thousands of years of human history who will be honored, who will be glorified, who will be exalted, who will be magnified, and who will be high and lifted up, who will be applauded, who will be lauded, who will be praised, who will be worshipped, who every knee will bow before is God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one. There's not one human, there's not one being that will be able to stand when everyone else kneels and say, well, I straightened my own life up. I got rid of this. I cut this out. I stopped doing this. I stopped talking like that. And, and now I'm right with God because of something that I am. No, all glory, all thanks, all honor, and all praise will go to only the Son of God. God's Son and God's Son only. Chapter 3, verse 21. Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid. If there would have been a law that could have given life, verily righteousness could have come through the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, so that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith that would afterwards be revealed. Therefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we should be justified. How? That we should be justified by faith. That we should be justified, that we should be made the righteousness of God, that we should be declared righteous by faith in Christ Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. You know it. You turn back to John. It's where we'll close. 1 Peter 2, 24. Jesus, his own self, bore our sins in his own body that we being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, that we, being dead in our sins, could live righteously, that we, being dead, could live, that we who were in sin might be right with God. He did that. That's something he did, not something you did. That's nothing that you do. See, so often we teach the second Part of righteousness, and that's right living, right conduct, right thinking, right speech, doing everything, and 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 being right with God. That's that's just as important. It's just as much in the Bible. But if we teach that first, then we lose sight of the fact that our right standing with God came through Him, not through me. It starts putting all of the all of the onus of being right with God on me. Get it right. Get it straight. Can't you take care of this? You, you need to get right. You need to pray through and get right with God. Well, I am right with God. Might not be living that way, and there may need some things changed and adjusted uh, within my heart, within my life, within my mouth, within my attitudes, within my motives. But my right standing with God comes through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the Lord Jesus Christ only. Now, let's look to the Gospel of John real quick. And, 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 and let's look at, let's look at three verses. 
Let's look at three verses. John chapter 1, verse 1. What's the first word? In the beginning. Gospel of John. Gospel of John. Chapter 1, verse 1. What's the first word? Yes. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Now, who's it talking about here? Jesus. How do we know that? Verse 14 says, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See, He wasn't created on the first Christmas morning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and He became flesh on that morning. Verse 3, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Why don't you go back to verse 4 and, 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 and look at that again. It says, it says, and in him was what? In him was life. And that word life is this word right here. It's pronounced zoe. It's the nature of God. It's the life and the nature of God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now look up here at John chapter 5, verse 26. Look at John chapter 5, verse 26. For as the Father hath life, in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself. For as the Father hath life, that's the Greek word zoe, that's the life and the nature of God. For as the Father hath life in himself, so he's given the Son to have life in himself. And then John 10.10, says the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that they might have life and that they might have life more abundantly. We think that means a bigger car. We think that means a four-car garage instead of a two. We think life more abundantly means more money in our pocket, more money in our checkbook, more money in the bank. We think life more abundantly means never having to take medicine. Never feeling bad. We think life more abundantly means happy and sassy. Never having a problem, never having an issue, never having a struggle, never having a trial. Abundant life. Let me just read those three verses to you. Substituting this Greek word right here. And listen to how it just jumps off the page and comes alive to you. In him was Zoe, and Zoe was the light of men. And as the Father hath in himself Zoe, he hath given the Son to have Zoe in himself as well. And I have come that you might have Zoe and have it more abundantly. Amen. Zoe is the life of God, and it includes rightness. It includes rightness. The rightness of God was given by God for Jesus to have in himself, and I've come that you might have rightness. I haven't come that you might have a bigger garage. I've come that you'd have the life and nature of God on the inside of you. I've come that you have the right standing that God and God alone only can decree and declare, and that doesn't come through you, that comes through him. That doesn't come through us, that comes through God's Son, our Savior, and our Redeemer 
who received right standing with God, who was declared to be righteous, who was made to be sin so that you and I could be righteous, and then who was raised out of that place of torment because he had never sinned. And God declared him to be right with me and anyone who's in him to be right with me with the same righteousness that Jesus has. It's what your Bible teaches. To which there are no levels, to which there's no such thing as being partial, partially. I look at you and you know what I think? I think you're all right. You're all right. Right with God. Right with God. Let's stand to our feet. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, a weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.